Let's hear it for Johnny. It, it's fun to joke about the fact we got to have a couple of rules, but I, I couldn't imagine having to do that every week, stand up here and say, nice people who uh, I've never met and people who hear it every week, please, uh, please uh, forgive us while we read you the riot act. And, and then you guys are so supportive. So thank you. Give yourselves a hand for that. <laughs> um, it's funny, you know, now that I'm up here like dressed appropriately for a show, I feel so much more comfortable than standing up here in people clothes. I, I can't, I don't, I don't feel like me in people clothes anymore. I've been doing uh, the, the circus thing for a while now and it just, it feels a little strange. And I, I, I imagine it probably looks a little strange. Does this look better for you? Is this working? Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm actually trying this some new, thank you. I wasn't ready yet. You want to try again? We'll back to thank you. Oh, we're going to. I think we're stuck with her. I, it might be worth pointing out that I was going to, uh, and never mind. It's not going to, telling her it's not going to work. I've lost my place. Oh, yeah, I remember. Yeah! That's the one. <laughs> Keep one of those around. You never know when you're going to need it. <laughs> but, uh, you know, I'm, I, I try this new. Uh, uh, the hat, actually, is, is brand new. Uh, well, I, and it's untested. You guys know, I don't know. That's the question. I, you newcomers don't know this, but I have magic hat. Uh, I work with kids a lot, and they throw the hat into an audience, and it always comes back. And I just, I just take it on faith that my hat will at some point magically sort of represent itself. It may go through some shenanigans along the way, and that's part of the joy and the abandonment of theaters, that these things might eventually happen. But it always, it always, it always comes back, but this is a new hat, and I, I don't know if it, if it works or not. I mean, I just kind of took it on faith that maybe it would if I wore that hat, that it would eventually get back up to the stage, and it's a new hat, to be fair. Wait, we just... It's true. It's true. Thank you. The hat, it works. It, behold, magic. You don't have to do any real, you know, it's just, that's, that's the truth. You don't have to do any real work. You just kind of believe and you're going to, it's going to work out. See, it's going to be fine. Sometimes it doesn't work and then you have to, you have to just wait, wait it out. Uh, but, you know, I've been playing a lot of characters, tis the season, Halloween, uh, and coming up, and, and you play a lot of characters and you start to lose track of, of who you are. Uh, you know, you put on a different hat and you don't think you're somebody else, but it really does affect you. you you're, you're new. Here, catch this. <laughs> Sorry. Put it on your head. On your, on your head. I only have minimal lice. Does it? No, that's fine. I have plenty. Minimal lice. How does it feel? I, if you're doing something, you're backlit. Magical. Yeah. Magical. Okay, good. Can I have it back? Awesome. So, so it, it affected you. It affected you a little bit. Give me. Wow, it was a nice throw. Well done. <laughs> sort of. We're gonna be field te testing it throughout the evening. Excuse me. <laughs> See if it. <laughs> it's getting better as the evening goes on. It'll probably improve. But it's, it, it does. It does affect you. Um, over the weekend, I played. A, it feels. Hang on. Yeah, uh, it, feel, it feels a awkward. Over the weekend, I played a bunch of different characters, actually, in the course of one weekend. Uh, and, and Sunday, I sort of peeked out with the weirdest thing I can play. Uh, some of you have, have met the great rhino. Yeah! Rhinoceros. I would like to say I'm making that up, but there are some things you can't fake. And so I'm wearing this giant rhinoceros horn, a pair of flappy ears, and this little shorts, and the funny socks, and the whole thing, and I'm out working with kids. And I have a nine-foot-tall tree with me, like you do, because you want shade. Logical. So I'm out at this festival, and so, there's a nine-foot-tall dancing tree next to me, and I'm dressed like a rhinoceros. And somebody walks up to me and says, aren't you Uncle Sam? <laughs> My initial reaction, of course, was to go two places. One was, no, duh. But I played Uncle Sam earlier this year. The second thought was, crap, I'm busted. And I almost reacted that way, and then I realized this wasn't a person who was trying to bust me. This is a person who was smiling from ear to ear and going, oh, I know you, behind that big stupid red, you're, you're Uncle Sam. You're, I met you and you're awesome. And, and I had a fan. And so I said, yeah. 
And that was a nice moment. But boy, did it give me an identity crisis. I didn't know who I was. So I went on. And I'm, I now have this in my head. And further problem, I'm trying to be the babysitter of a nine-foot-tall dancing tree at a crowded festival. And Rhino, Rhino isn't very smart. No, Rhino, I am a genius compared to Rhino. The gap between me and Johnny starts to feel like the gap between me and Rhino. <laughs> Which end of that I'm on is up to you to decide. But I started, I started going around and trying to reconcile symbol of our nation with Rhino in my head. And I, I start, Rhino started losing because he's not very smart. And I was, I was starting to come a little apart at the seams there and I didn't know quite what to do with it. This kid walks up to me. Again, there's a nine foot tall Rhino uh, tree. Uh, that would be confusing. <laughs> See, already it's getting confusing. Nine foot tall tree, there's Rhino. There's Rhino's friend Chicken, which I forgot to mention. So it goes like this, it goes, it goes, hi, I'm Tree, this is Rhino, and this is Chicken. <laughs> Hadn't counted on you being here, sorry. <laughs> Thank you. So, the purpose, she has this thing where if I say Chicken, we get distracted. So I'll try not to say, poultry, and otherwise, because I'll say chicken, and she'll laugh, and we'll never get through this story. So, poultry. The idea is if a child is terrified of nine-foot-tall monsters and clowns, they can relate to a stuffed animal in my pocket. You're welcome. The stuffed animal happens to be in the shape of a chicken. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he rang you up, Pavlov. <laughs> so, so, you know, the idea was somewhere along the way a child will connect instead of running the other direction, hopefully. And it actually works really well for us. So we're doing this, and we're, we're interacting with kids, and this kid walks up, ignores the nine-foot-tall tree, ignores the chicken. That one was my bad, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> and, um, and, and looks straight at me and says, are you that rhino? a weird cry, are you that rhino? And I, and I said, I don't know. Which rhino do you think I am? <laughs> it seems like about the only thing you could say at that point to a small child. And this is a small child, like on the stage, not down there, otherwise they'd be like nine feet tall. <laughs> Very confusing. But uh, I said, which one? Well, the one from my Boy Scout camp. And I realized that this child was at the very first performance that I played, this character that didn't have a name when he entered the world. I just put on a rhino horn and went, I'm crazy now. And when 500 kids scream, hey, rhino, come here. That's your name now. You're, you're stuck at that. It's never great. It's like you've been bonded, like you're a baby duckling. And you're like, <laughs> <laughs> and, and it's exactly, yeah. And it, that was it. So this kid was there. I'm like, yeah, once I verified, because I'm not going to lie to the kid, because, you know, if there turns out there is another rhino clown in the world, I need to go find him and kill him. But... <laughs> But in this case, it was the same one, so this, we verified this is good. Yes, we're buddies, and I felt like a rock star. I got my identity back, I'm having, my game is on, and I'm doing great, and everything is awesome, and I'm rocking out, and I'm talking to kids, and I'm doing jokes, and I'm being silly, and I'm taking care of the nine-foot-tall tree, and I'm introducing people to my poultry, and it's going really well. And this, this guy walks up to me, and he looks at me, and he has that sort of, sideways quizzical look and he says again to the rhinoceros with a piece of poultry in his pocket standing next to the nine foot tall dancing tree are you that gentleman from the open stage <laughs> looked around real fast there's not a lot of kids and i'm like kind of impressed that you figured that out <laughs> yes i say yes i am there's not that many people here. I know all of you, you're my buddies, and new friends will get to know each other better as time goes on, keep coming back. But I didn't know who this guy was. Now, new people don't know this, you guys know this. We put videos from the show online every week. He's gonna see this very video, because he told me, well, somebody showed me a video from the show, and now I watch the show, having never been every single week. I was just about to, yeah. So I was, I was blown away because 
I, in one day, I got all my identity just sort of handed to me at once and said, well, well who are you? And, it, and, it, and the truth is, uh, it, it sort of set up this sort of prescient moment because a few days prior to that, I was teaching clown and improv uh, to a bunch of the people here. Who was that evil? We were teaching, we do a thing we do every month where we teach a bit of improv, me and Johnny do. And uh, we had talked about standing in front of an audience and saying, this is me and how scary that was to just drop all the pretense and all the BS and just be you. And I realized, well, all of those things were me. But the one that drove it home for me was, was the one where I, I stand here because this is where I learned how to be all of those other things. This place is magic. It makes hats that are not yet magical start to come to life. And it makes rhinoceroses that have best friends that are pieces of poultry. And it has nine foot tall trees, and it has madness. And most of all, it has you, which makes that possible. We call it the open stage. Welcome. And thank you.